Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us um, for mm -hmm. the Coolidge at Sudbury Phase Two Lottery. We are very excited to be a part of this project and very happy that you could be uh, joining with us today. It's a little unconventional to be doing this via a Zoom meeting versus live and in person, um, but uh, due to the current situation, obviously we have to make some adjustments to our, our normal practices. My name is Tammy Polson. Even though you see Kristen Pine on your computer screen, um, she holds the license for PBD for the, the Zoom meetings. But I am Tammy Polson. I am the Senior Director of Compliance. I will be um, hosting the lottery today along with Joseph Jer Jordan, who is with me today. Joseph is the leasing manager um, in charge of this particular project. And I want you to all bear with us just a little bit today. This is our first Zoom meeting, so we're all getting a little adjusted to uh, what needs to happen here. And I still have people trying to join the meeting, so I will be adding those to our participants as we go along. Um, with that, um, I'm going to also, add, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm going to have um, Holly Grace, who is with Vinay Breath, who is uh, the owner and developer of this project. She was gonna say a couple of words before we get started today. So Holly, I'm going to unmute you. And you were here a second ago, now you just disappeared. Bear with me while I find you. There she is. Yep. Did it, just yes, sir? Yep, just that's it right there. Holly, Holly, Holly. Holly, there she is. <laughs> um, unmute. There we go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Grace, I work with B'nai Breath Housing. And thank you all for joining us on this first for us Zoom lottery. It's exciting and we're a little, little nervous, but um, very exciting about this, this progress on the development. So the Coolidge is under construction now and has been making good and cautious pros sorry, progress in these very interesting times that we're living in. And we're um, going ahead and progressing to have it completed and ready for move-in this fall. So we're excited to be working with Peabody Properties to help inform you all on this process and getting you um, hopefully signed up and um, qualified and all, all possible to move into this building. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Holly. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to try and find Holly and mute her again. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Um, today's um, presentation is being recorded and it will be available on the Coolidge Sudbury 2 website. So that should be available probably tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. So if for some reason you want to go back and view any of this, um, that link will be available on the website. Um, I also encourage you, if you haven't already done so, is we have a five part segment information session that's also available for viewing. Um, it will discuss the project, um, the process, a little bit about the lottery, which will already have taken place, um, and then the interview process. But it's a very informative um, information session that will answer pretty much any question you might have. With that said, um, we're always available for um, discussions via phone call or email and those contact information um, is also available on the information session. Um, as I mentioned earlier, everyone um, is currently muted and will be throughout the presentation today. Um, when we're finished, at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see uh, there's a chat button. And if you just click on that, it'll give you the ability to ask questions. Um, we ask that you keep it very specific and general to the lottery itself today. If you have any questions that are specific to your application and anything that is, again, specific to you, um, we would prefer that you wait and we discuss and have a conversation offline after the lottery has been concluded. So with that said, we will go ahead and get started with today's presentation. I just want to make sure I just got a message that um, they couldn't hear Kristen, which I think is you. Um, That's, I'm, I'm not muted. So can everyone okay. hear me okay? Jean Marie, I see you on my screen. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Excellent, then we're good to go. Okay. All right. Let me move this out of the way. Let me get it over here. All right, Joe. Okay. So 
Hi, everybody. It's nice to see some faces. I've met most of you already over the phone or um, via email. Um, like Holly and Tammy said, we're a little nervous. This is the first time we've done a lottery over Zoom, so bear with us. Um, real quick, we're going to talk about Coolidge 2 being the second phase of Coolidge 1, developed you know, by B'nai B'rith. Um, like Tammy mentioned, we're hoping for our occupancy, a certificate of occupancy um, for November 1st. Um, but we're really hoping to get early October, mid-October. Um, and we will be updating people as we get closer to those dates. <clears throat> um, this property will be managed by Barkin Management. And once you sign your lease and are handed over the keys, they will be your point of contact going forward um, once the lease up is over. Goodness. Bear, Bear with us, <laughs> technical difficulties here. There we go. Okay. So many of you guys know there are 12 one bedroom units that have rental assistance and set aside um, with applicants with a homeless preference. And those rents are 30% of the annual adjusted income. I've spoken, like I said in the beginning, to most of the folks that are on the Zoom right now um, in regards to the 30% AMI. If you have questions specific to your application um, in your lottery number, then like Tammy said earlier, please um, save those questions for after today's lottery. Um, there are also 44 one bedroom units that are set aside at 60% AMI, and those rents will be at 1165 per month. So those rents are set at 1165, excuse me, for the 60% AMI, we do have to income qualify you for the program but your rent does not adjust based on your income, if that makes sense. That's usually a question that comes up a lot during these lotteries. Um, we do have three mobility and two sensory units, and people have indicated on their lottery applications whether or not they need an accessible unit for hearing or mobility. And of the 44 units, 31 will have the local um, Sudbury preference. So 70% of the building will be filled by local um, Sudbury residents. Okay. All right. So if you're on today's call, everyone who's on the call has been deemed eligible um, because you received a letter stating that you're eligible with a lottery number, with an application number, I'm sorry. Everyone will receive a lottery number. No one wins anything. I know that because it's called a lottery, people just equate that to winning. Everyone that applied during the lottery period and was deemed eligible is going to be given a lottery number today. So I want everyone to know that. Um, the lottery itself is literally a, a few seconds um, as a random selection <clears throat> and it's conducted um, by the computer program. It's really like less than a few seconds. So it's very, very quick and anticlimactic. So. <laughs> Um, I don't want anyone to think we're going to be pulling numbers out of a hat. Um, it's done automatically on the computer now. Um, and it says, very unlike lotteries of the past, I don't know how many people on the Zoom call have been to lotteries of the past um, where they were drawn from a container. It was a lengthy process. I personally remember them being very long and boring. Um, and they could go for hours and hours, depending on the number of applicants. Um, and this is much easier and error free. So this is going to be the way of the future, I would say, for lotteries going forward. Um, okay. All right. And so today, once the lottery has been completed and the lottery numbers have been assigned, a final sort will need to be conducted. This will be done first by applicants. And this, again, information is going to be in the videos that we have talked about um, before that are on the Coolidge Sudbury website. Um, it's first by applicants requiring an accessible unit then by local Sudbury preference, and then by lottery number. And then it's important to know the 30% program is a little different. They're rental, rental assisted units and they're set aside for the homeless preference. If for any reason we do not have enough eligible applicants for this set aside, meaning we don't have enough people that have indicated they're homeless or at risk of being homeless, then we'll move on to the non-homeless applicants and there is no local preference for the 30% units. So with that being said, if we have people that have indicated on their applications that they're at homeless or at risk of being homeless, those folks will, have, will be drawn first of the 30% units, then we'll move on to the folks that didn't indicate a homeless preference. 
Did that clarify a little bit? Yep, okay. absolutely. Um, and just because you may have the lowest lottery number, it does not mean that you're guaranteed a unit. Um, we'll have a few minutes for question and, and answer period after the lottery draw, draw sorry, um, and click on the chat button at the bottom of the screen to ask a question. We're not gonna discuss specific questions as it relates to your specific application, but we'll be happy to call after the process to discuss it. Um, and like I said, I've spoken to many of you already over the phone. I think m most, if not all of you have my phone number, so please feel free to call after with any personal specific questions to yourselves. All right, due to COVID-19, uh, most if not all interviews are gonna be conducted by phone. Um, please keep in mind your eligibility was determined based on the information that you provided on your application. So once we start the interview process and collect documentation to support that information, there is a possibility that you no longer may be eligible. Um, I could give an example, a really easy one saying that if you put on your application the net amount that you receive for social security and pensions and didn't disclose the gross amount at the time of the interview, we use the gross. It could deem, I'm not saying that's gonna deem someone ineligible, but because we're now counting the gross, that could be the determination between the two. Mm -hmm. um, we start with the screening process, which includes a credit and background, criminal background check. If you pass, <clears throat> you'll be conducted for an interview. If you do not pass, you'll be given an opportunity to appeal. Um, it's very important to know that you have the right to appeal any, um, any failed credit or criminal. Um, we'll provide you with a document that will tell you all this documentation um, that will be required to provide. This list is also available on our website. I can't stress the importance, and I know that you've watched the videos, but the more information that we have that's current and um, relates to your file, the faster that we can process and get it approved. Um, and again, we want current, 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 everything current. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Um, if you've applied with a homeless or local preference, you will be required to provide documentation to support it. And this is very important to remember. For homeless preference, a letter from your caseworker or shelter where you reside. <clears throat> Excuse me, some of you have provided that. If, if that's the case, um, if you know that you, um, you attached a letter from your shelter or your caseworker, then we have it. If not, we will be requesting that. Local preference must be supported with a utility bill, voters registration, a copy of your lease or mortgage statement. And I'm gonna interject for just a second because a part of the local preference is also uh, those who work um, in the town of Sudbury. We will be collecting that documentation from you um, by, you know, because we're gonna be collecting pay stubs and whatnot. So we will already have documentation to support that once we start this process. Okay, so we ask that you not contact to contact us to ask about your placement as it can change very quickly. So um, your placement, you could be at the very, very bottom of the list. And if we told you that and, and, and you, know, you start making other plans, we can go through applicants very quickly is what I'm trying to say. So we don't want anyone to be discouraged and we don't typically give placement. We will never say that you're number two on the list, you're number four on the list. If we contact you for an interview, we typically will say that your name has neared the top of the list. Um, we don't want to give anyone false hope, and we certainly don't want people to be given landlords notices to vacate when they haven't yet been approved. Um, it's very important that we have a current phone number and email address. We have gotten quite a few emails bounced back to us. Um, if you don't have an email address, I would suggest possibly working with someone to set one up. Um, it will make this process that much easier. And if you're not interviewed and offered a unit, you will be placed on the post lottery wait list based on lottery number. So if we were to fill the building with all of our lottery applicants and then we still had 30 lottery applicants after the building's full, then they would go on to the wait list and they would be the top of the list. So that's about it. And that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> so that's just a quick quick overview um, of the project, a little bit about the lottery process and the post-lottery process. And again, we're always available um, for you to give us a call and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. So with that being said, we are, drum roll please. I'm actually gonna switch over to a different screen. 
This has the list of all the lottery numbers. So currently we received a total of 145 applications. So what we're going to do, this does this show anywhere. Um, so this is everyone's application number. This is gonna be the lottery number. What I'm doing is I'm going to highlight all of these numbers. Over here is where it's going to actually start the random sort. So I've already clicked cells within and this is hidden a little bit. I'm gonna hit shuffle and within two seconds, you're gonna see these numbers change. And that didn't, oh, there we go. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do right now, I want to save this. So I have it for my records and so nothing gets um, messed up in any way. to save that and then to make it easier for you i'm going to sort all of this by your application number so it's going to be easy for you to find so if you have your application number with you right now pull that out and i'm very slowly going to scroll down this so you can see what your lottery number is over in this particular column so i'm going to go through it very slowly so you can pick it out um, just so you know, we will also be mailing these results to you via an email or a, um, a letter if you do not have an email address. So we will definitely get these results out to you within the next couple of days. Um, again, you are welcome to call us and you can verify that information as well. Um, but I am going to scroll down a little bit by little bit. Can you enlarge the spreadsheet? Can you change? This is, this, what do you mean by enlarge? Um, maybe make your screen right here. The number's larger? Yeah, so that way the spreadsheet, it's one of the one of the comments. Oh, so people are having a hard time yeah, seeing it. So okay, the numbers. Say, so I'm expanding the numbers and try to make them a little bit bigger. And I'll go through this again. Um, if for some reason you do not have your application number, we do have that information available right now. You can, um, again, click the chat button at the very bottom of your screen. Um, and we can see who you are, I believe. And then we can um, tell you what your application number is so you can compare it. I feel like we should have some music or something in the background. Yeah. I'm going to go back up to the top. And I'll scroll down again. Could I have an application? Who is it? Um, Here's everyone's names in yep. alphabetical order. It's by last name. And who is it? Um, Dickerson. But I want to private. Okay, we don't need to do that. So, um, well, yeah, go ahead and let her know. And this is the time to, yeah, again, if you have any questions, even outside of what your application number might be, feel free to ask those questions at this time via your chat button. Arnold. Wish there was an easier way to do this. This is actually not bad at all. I'm gonna go back up to the top again. What's it for? Mm -hmm. Is it with a K? Oh, with a K, yeah. I'm going to scroll down real quick because somebody just asked for their application number and we know what theirs is. Actually, yeah. Is there any other questions we can answer? Um, Elizabeth, uh, is, is there anything that I need to know 
do I do now to proceed or do I wait for Barker to contact me for validating data? So Okay, so um, the question was, what's basically the next step? Um, and they mentioned Barkin's name. I want to be really clear that PBD Properties, Joe and myself, and there's actually another individual, her name is uh, Maureen McEwen, will be um, actively involved in the lease up of this building and processing your files. So PBD Property um, is the agent to get you through this entire lease up. So you will not be dealing with Barkin until after you have signed your lease, you've received your keys, and then at that point, um, any dialogue with Barkin would happen at that, will occur at that time. So right now, um, as we said earlier, um, we're gonna take this these numbers and I have to do a source. I have a very long spreadsheet where I have to determine who um, has requested an accessible unit, then break that down by lottery number. We have our 30% applicants, our 60% applicants, we have our local preference, um, and um, so we, I have to go through and do that entire sort. I'll be done with that before the end of the day. And then we'll log that information in as well. And then starting next week is when we will begin contacting people via the phone and or email and start setting up some preliminary um, interviews. So if you don't hear from us right away, please don't call us and say, I haven't heard from anyone. As you rise to the top of that lottery wait list, we will be reaching out to you, like I said, either a phone call and or email. In most cases, we'll do both. We'll try to contact you by phone. Also let you know, if we get a hold of you, then we'll have that conversation and set up a date um, and a time to actually have you gather all your documentation and then we'll start that interview process over the phone. Um, if you don't hear from us, it's because you have not reached the top of the wait list yet. Um, for some people, I think there was one or two people that did not have an email address or a phone number. So all we have is a physical address. In that situation, we will be mailing that individual or those two individuals something in the mail and seeing if there's any way we can find another contact because working directly through the mail for everything is going to be quite difficult to do. And it might be a situation where this person just forgot to put the uh, phone number or email address on the application itself. But please know we will reach out to you at least two or three times um, to, to start that initial conversation. At some point during this process, if we give you a deadline, whether it's to get um, documentation back to us or just to call us back so we get the process started. Um, and if you don't meet that deadline and get back to us, you will be deemed um, as ineligible for non-response. You will receive a letter. So unless there's a medical reason why you were unable to respond to us within that timely manner, you're basically going to become ineligible. Um, we may consider putting you at the bottom of the wait list at that time, but it just depends on what the circumstances were and why you did not reach out to us when we initially reached out to you. Any other questions? Um, I'm just, I'm answering the people privately that have asked for that. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down the, um, the list again because there's a lot of people that appears that did not have their application number. So we're gonna give them the opportunity to look for that. Um, other than that, um, can you just check and see if there are any other questions that we can address yes. and then we can um, let people, at this point, if you don't have any questions or you don't wanna to listen to the answers to some of the questions that may be coming across, you are more than welcome to leave the Zoom meeting. Um, again, thank you so very, very much for joining us. We hope you have a very happy and safe 4th of July. Um, and that's it. Again, feel free to jump off. And if you have questions, remain with us and we will get to those questions. So one question was asking how many um, lottery applicants there are for mobility adapted units. Um, I don't necessarily know that's information that we um, would typically give out, how yeah. many people applied for an assisted. I guess, yeah, I, yeah, we probably assisted. would not be providing information on how many. We got a couple of those um, emails earlier, people wanting to know how many applicants there were, how many were for this and set aside sure. or that set aside, and we really don't like to release that information. Um, again, when you reach the top of the lottery wait list, you will be contacted. We understand your excitement and how much you really want to get into this property. It's going to be an amazing, amazing property, um, but we just ask that you be patient. So JW asked if we could write the leasing team names here. Um, and I apologize, I did respond, I think, privately to JW. Um, oh, the, th those of us that are working on it? Yeah, um, so I'm sorry, JW, can you clarify if you needed my, my and Tammy's information or the entire team 
that's working on this project. And Sadell is just asking to scroll slowly. Okay. Um, what number was Sadell and we can get to her? Um, H. Here. She's 29. She's actually up here. Sadella, I'm scrolling up right now so you can see your lottery number versus your application number. Okay. Yes, column A is the. Um... Column A is the lottery number. Column B is your application number. I could have frozen that. Let's see if I can do that. Thank you, Where Tam. That's a great comment to hear. Um, Where's my freeze? Tim, it was our first one, so we appreciate the kind words. There we go. Um, any other questions? Um, so Patricia Keating, it, not Patricia, I'm sorry, Sierra Parker. I'm, I'm, oh, you guys are going quick. Doreen will, Goldberg is asking if we're rolling the balls today. And Doreen, I don't know if you just signed on, um, but we have um, done the sort. So the lottery itself has been um, completed, meaning the sort. There's not actual balls that are being rolled today for the lottery. Right, so if you have your application number, again, look at your application number here on the right side, and then your lottery number will be on the left side. And if you don't have your application number, um, again, chime in on the chat bar at the bottom and let us um, give you that information. Okay. So saying she didn't see that. I just went by hers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Della, do you have your application number because it's on the screenshot right now? So you're Any other questions? Um, Carol Dickinson, nice work. I've been Zooming for the past four months. Um, this has been by far the most pleasant one. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for the kind feedback. We greatly appreciate it. We're gonna get a lot better at this, so. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Karen. Um, Anad, we, um, we can talk after if you like, but we, um, Right now, given your lottery number and your set aside, we still have to do the sort. So it's, it, it's, it's hard to indicate what the odds are as far as that goes. But we can answer personal questions relating to your lottery number and application offline. And that goes for anybody. Is that it? All right. I think we've answered everybody's questions. Again, if you think of something later, um, again, you won't be able to reach us through the Zoom, obviously. Um, but again, Coolidge Sudbury um, 2.com, right? Coolidge Sudbury 2.com. Coolidge, Sud Coolidge Sudbury .com. Just Coolidge Sudbury .com is the um, web address and our um, the phone number as well as um, our um, email address is also located out there as well. We check it every single day, multiple times throughout the day. Um, so please feel free to reach us via one of those methods and we'll get back with you just as quickly as possible. So with that, we're going to wrap this up. Say again, thank you so very much for joining us today. Um, best of luck to everyone. Um, we can't house everyone that applied today, but um, hopefully um, 
hopefully if you don't get selected again you'll stay on the post lottery wait list and hopefully you can find something um in the very very near future that makes you happy and you can place that you can call home right and please refer friends and family that you may know of looking for housing we are still accepting post lottery applications at this time we are very important so if you know someone that is looking please refer them to us great thank you thank you everyone